Welcome to another video from Robotic Mower Services. In this video, we are finally going to address the new charging current supervisor feature and some of the errors caused by it and how to diagnose this and what to do to fix it. So let's start with going back to the, uh, the video that we posted a while back where we were showing you these melted connectors on the auto mowers. You know, the charging plate has a wire that comes down and goes into the bottom of the mower through that. There's a, there's a grommet there. You pop that grommet out, that plug. You go to disconnect that on some of the mowers and it'll be melted together. And you would have to replace that charging plate assembly in the nose of the mower and that harness that runs from the front of the mower back to the main board. And that would solve the problem. But everybody was wondering, well, why is this happening? Well, Husqvarna actually added a new feature through software updates to prevent this from happening. So let's take a look here at what they shared with the dealers as far as this new feature and what all is involved with it. And then we'll go from there. All right. Charging current supervisor. See here it says Husqvarna has made software improvements to safeguard the charging system for 2022 models. This is something Husqvarna has done to further increase product safety. Important note, when this coming software will be installed in the mower, there may be some installations where the mower will stop working. These are installations where the charging system resistance is higher than the threshold that Husqvarna has set as safe. The mower software will measure the resistance in the total charging system, including mower, charging station, low voltage cable, and power supply unit. The higher the resistance, the lower the current will be in the charging system. If the charging current is less than 80% of the expected level, the mower will stop working and display the fault codes, charging station error 30, and or charging station block. Now here, they show you all the components that could cause this, this um, charging current supervisor error. And it starts with the transformer and the low voltage cable, uh, your harness inside your charging station. It goes from the low voltage cable to the charging station board, charging station board, the harness that goes from the charging station board to the contacts that the mower plugs in against, those contacts themselves. Then you've got the stuff in the mower, the charging plates in the nose of the mower, the harness that goes from the charging plates in the nose of the, um, between the nose of the mower back to the main board, uh, the main board itself, and the batteries in the mower. All of these things are part of the charging system, and any one of these, if they have a problem or high resistance, can cause that, that value that the mower is looking for to drop below 80% of that total value and give you this error. All Husqvarna automowers will have this software functionality. This software has been gradually rolled out over the platforms since the autumn 2021. Most of the software upgrades should have been done during the winter service. Foda mowers will get the software through Foda, but it has, has not yet been released. Longer cables. Maximum recommended length of low voltage cables is 65 feet, 20 meters. This will be important to follow. We are aware that some installations have considerably longer cables, e.g. golf courses and sports fields. We are investigating the possibilities to offer those customers a cable of greater length with re reduced resistance. New behavior. If the docking is unsuccessful, the mower will back out again and do a new attempt. The mower will try eight times before stopping with charging station blocked, fault displayed, or charging station error 30. The docking attempt is not accepted unless there is at least 80% of the expected charging current. So this is what that error looks like. You're going to see if this mower is going to go into the charging station and it's going to dock. And it's going to sit there and then eventually you'll see it give a little bit of a kick forward. And most people will say, yep, right there it goes. That, well, that's typical, just making sure that it's the whole way in there because they've always done this. Now you're going to wait a little bit longer and you'll see it do it again. And that's not a good sign. Right there it went. Because normally it would do it once, it wouldn't do it twice. So the mower is going to sit there for 30 seconds. And because it doesn't feel that 80% of the charging current that it's supposed to have, 
you're going to see it's just going to back out on its own and it's going to start going through this process all over again, just as Husqvarna said that it would do. So you can see here comes this mower back out of the charging station. It's going to roam around. It's going to come back in and dock. And, you know, if you have that resistance there and when that mower comes in and it doesn't sense that at least 80% of the charging current that it's supposed to have there, that charging current isn't just magically going to be there again. So this is going to keep happening for that eight times, as they said, and then the mower will give the error saying charging station blocked or charging station error 30. And uh, then you'll have to go from there as far as diagnosing it. The hard part is when you come out and you see charging station blocked and you think, well, my charging station's level. You know, there's nothing in the way. Why is it saying the charging station was blocked? And you go through that whole process, fixing all that stuff up or tweaking that stuff just a little bit to get that all over again because it's actually a charging current situation and not uh, the typical charging station blocked errors that are occurring here. So how do we diagnose this? How do we tell what the component is or components that are causing this issue? Well, Husqvarna gives a flow chart and we'll start by discussing that first. So this is the flow chart that Husqvarna put out there. And you can see that they start out with run the machine in a well-functioning installation. That means the mower that you're having the problem with, they want you to run it in another area where another mower is running and see if you have the same problem with that first mower since you know that that second mower is not having a problem in that area. If you run that mower in that area that it was having no issues before, and you don't get any errors, then they're saying that the problem would be with the charging station, low voltage cable, or transformer in that original installation. If you run the mower in this area where there were no problems at, and you do have those errors again, then it's got to be something with the mower. That is, you're seeing it right there, that is the flow chart that they gave, and I mean, if you don't have two mowers right next to each other or on the same property pretty close by, this is tough to do, um, let's face it. Or, I mean, if you're not carrying a, a mower, the same model in your service vehicle to throw out there and say, well, I put this mower into this installation where this other mower is having problems and this other mower that I brought with me doesn't have any problems, so it must be something in the mower that works in this area and all that stuff. Now, if you're lucky enough to have an installation you know, right there on the same property or your neighbor has the same model mower and everything, and you could swap your mower into his yard and you know, kind of narrow it down to whether, well, it's something in the mower or, well, it's something in the charging station and it's not mower related. Okay, yeah, you're going to gain a little bit there. But, I mean, you look at this and there's got to be a better way, right? There's got to be an easier way, a simpler way. There's got to be some other way to start out and, and uh, be able to solve this without having to have another mower there or have another place to put a mower at to narrow it down. Well, that's what I'm going to show you here, and hopefully this makes life a lot easier for all you guys that don't understand these errors from this new uh, charging current supervisor feature. All right, so let's go back to the important part here. The docking attempt is not accepted unless there is at least 80% of the expected charging current. So the first thing you got to know is, what is the charging current that your mower is expecting to see? And what is 80% of that total that the mower is expecting to see? So what you're going to be looking for is not the voltage coming into your mower, it's going to be the current, remember, the amperage coming into your mower. And you can find the information right on a transformer for your mower as to what it should be putting out. Now, there is always the possibility that through the years, you got the wrong transformer for your mower. So, just a brief review here. This is a 7,000 milliamp uh, transformer. This is the one used for the 450s, 550s, and all-wheel drives. This is the old style with the white label. The new style does not have the white label and just says 7 amp, which is 7,000 milliamp. Your 430X, 430XH should be using this transformer right here. This is the old style with the white label 4,200 milliamp, or the new version with no white label 4.2 amp, which again is the same as 4,200 milliamps. 
This is the transformer originally used with the 310, 315, 315X, 115H, and you may find it with the 415X. You can see right here on the side of it, 1.3 amp. The new version without the uh, white lettering on it, you can see right here, 1,300 milliamp. This is the new version transformer used for the 310, 315, 315X, 115H, and 415X models. So if you're following along so far, then you can probably guess where we're going to next. The mowers that are going to have the most cases of these charging current supervisor errors are going to be the ones that had the melted plugs, right? And they would be your 450s, 550s, the mowers that were using the 7 amp transformers because they're putting more power in through the charging system. So when you have more power coming through there, you have that weak link, which is what your resistance would be. Then you're going to have those melted spots or you're going to have those spots that just burn apart, right? So it only makes sense that the 450s, 550s, the mowers that use the 7 amp transformer they're going to be the ones where this error would show up the most. So where do you start with the diagnosing of this issue, especially if you know for sure that you just got the charging station error 30 message on your mower and you know it's a problem with the charging current, uh, something to do with that in the charging system. Well, where you're going to start is by putting the mower back in the charging station. You're going to put it back in there. You're going to open it up to the menu. And now you want information about your charging system on your mower. So where is the best place to get information from your mower? The quick info menu. So with the mower in the charging station, you're going to hold down that zero button and go into the quick info menu. And before we get into the ones that where we suspect to have the most errors, let's show you some stuff with a 430X or 430XH to give you a better idea of what you should be seeing and what to look for. So here we are in our quick info menu for our 430X. You can either look at the overview or you can actually go into battery one. You can see here on the overview that 4,151 milliamp, that is your charge current. Again, it's supposed to be at least 80% of the 4,200 milliamp. So we are well within that 80%. When you select battery one and you come in here, it actually has it labeled with the current. That's what you want to look at, your charge current, 4,148 milliamp. Now remember, we need to see at least 80% of what the mower is expecting to see, which is 4,200 milliamp because this is a 430X. So 80% of that 4,200 milliamps would be 3,360 milliamps. As long as we have more than 3,360 milliamps showing up here in the quick info menu, we know that everything from the wall outlet coming through the charging station into the mower all the way to the main board is good because we are over 80% of that 4,200 milliamps. If we have less than that 3,360 milliamps showing up here, in our quick info menu, then we know that we've got some resistance build up somewhere along the line and we need to start going back through and we need to start checking uh, resistance in all the different components. Follow me here? Pretty simple when you look at this quick info menu because this is gonna help you narrow it down as to whether it's the main board or it's one of the wires. And stick with me here because we'll get into all that other stuff, but. This is what you would want to see. I'm showing you on a 430X, 430XH, because you got the one battery. It's pretty simple numbers to work with. But like I said earlier, you're more likely to see this issue on one of the mowers that uses the 7 amp transformer, which would be a 450 or 550. So let's take a look at one of them. So this is the quick info menu on a 450X. We have sitting in the charging station. You can see right there, uh, battery one, the charge current, 2,061 milliamps. Battery two, 2,069 milliamps. If you remember from what I just told you earlier on here, this mower is supposed to be using a 7 amp transformer, which would be 7,000 milliamps. We need to see 80% of that for this mower to work properly. 
is 2,061 milliamps, 80% of 7,000. Nope, <laughs> is 2,069 milliamps, 80% of 7,000 milliamps. No, it is not. We need to be at at least 5,600 milliamps to be at 80% of 7,000. So this is going to give you that error. This is going to give you the charging station blocked error or the charging station error 30 that they were talking about because there is not enough power coming into this mower for this mower to be satisfied. So here we have the quick info menu from another 450X. And you can see the charge current for battery number one, 3,463 milliamps. Charge current for battery two, 3,417 milliamps. Remember, we need 7,000 milliamps. Is this going to work? Is this enough? Because we need to have at least 5,600 milliamps for this mower to be satisfied and stay on a charging station. Well, according to this, battery one's only got 3,463 and battery two has only got 3,417. Is that enough? Yeah, that is enough. And you're probably thinking, well, how the hell could that be? Because that's only about half of that 7,000. Exactly. Because on the 450s and 550s, those mowers with two batteries, they split the charging current. So that's the trick here when it comes to these 450s. And that's why I showed you the 430 first, because it was really simple. It's one battery. And you could see what your totals were that you're supposed to be looking for. On these ones with two batteries that use the 7 amp transformer, you need to combine the charge current between both batteries. So we need a total of at least 56. 5,600 milliamps, 5,600 milliamps for this mower to say, yeah, I'm good to go. And if it doesn't, with that number showing up there, then we know it's a mainboard issue. This one here has a total of over 3,000, or I'm sorry, over 6,800 uh, between those two batteries. So that's well over that 5,600 that it needs to see. So everything from the wall outlet all the way through the charging station and all the way through the mower into the main board is good in this mower. If it is giving you a charging station blocked error or a charging station error 30, then you know, hey, I better look at the main board on this thing because everything is out, out everything else is good and it is getting the proper power into the mower. So once you've verified through the quick info menu that there's not enough current coming in through the mower. First thing you want to do is look at the transformer and make sure the right one is being used for the mower that you're running. The next thing you want to do is you want to start checking for resistance in components that you know uh, are likely to cause a problem. And these mowers that use these 7 amp transformers, as we know now, as I pointed out many times in this video already, we know that there has been a weak link right there at that connector between where charging plate harness comes and plugs into the plug for the harness in the mower right underneath that grommet right inside the chassis of the mower so i would suggest pulling that plug out pull that grommet out unplug that see if you can actually unplug it if not then you know that's definitely a problem that needs to be fixed but if you can then while you have the plug undone there it's not very hard to take a multimeter stick one end into the plug uh, for those charging plates and the other one on the charging plates and check for continuity check your resistance uh, between one end of that that harness and the other end and see what you get you know if you're over one ohm you might want to look into that you might want to start trying to clean some stuff up or just replace that assembly in general you know uh, something to definitely look at is those wires screw onto those plates those plates can become corroded you can get some rust build up all that kind of stuff in there. So you might want to take that screw out, just make sure everything's clean. That can make a big difference in the amount of resi resistance you have in that little harness there. If that tests good, both wires, the positive side and the negative side, because we've seen them where the negative side is great, the positive side, you know, three ohms, five ohms, you know, corrosion build up in there, or the plug is pushing back and forth. You know, if you wiggle your, your probe around a little bit for your multimeter, just double check all that stuff. Um, I would suggest, though, if you've got any kind of issue with that, with that harness right there, 
also went from the mower up and just replaced the other one. It goes from that charging plate harness back to the main board because there's a good chance that there's damage done to it or it's going to be suspect later on too. Uh, another easy one to check for resistance are the charging plates for the charging station because they're right out there in the open. And if you just take those two screws out to take the top cover off of that charging station, you can get to the other end there where it plugs into the circuit board. Real easy to check both ends, see if you got high resistance there. And again, these have those, those plates where the wires are connected to those plates with a screw. Sometimes the nut will come loose on that screw. The wire will be a little bit loose and not making good contact. Check all that stuff out. Take those screws out, clean those plates up, clean the end of the wires up. Make sure that you've got good, uh, good con continuity there between the wires, the plates, hardware, and all that stuff. And see if, if you have high resistance, just see if that makes a change in it. Uh, if not, then definitely you've got to replace that whole uh, component. But it's worth a shot to take the, the, the time to clean that stuff up and see if that's where your problem's at. Because you don't want to go throwing new parts in there. And then next thing you know, a couple months later, you're having the same issue because this is just in an environment where it's going to attract a lot of moisture and you're going to have these corrosion issues over and over again. You know, if you've got that going on, then you want to figure out a way to keep that from happening, obviously. But those two right there, those are two of the most common areas where you will see corrosion build up and you'll get that resistance. Uh, you can also check the resistance, you know, from one end of your uh, low voltage cable to the other, you know, check the positive, check the negative. Make sure that both of them have very low resistance. When I say low resistance, you want to be down there around 1 ohm. You know, you don't want to be up there at 3, 5, 10, or anything like that. Uh, the other thing is with this, you know, you're checking each of these components. And you got to keep track of how much resistance you're finding in each one. Because it could be, okay, well, I've got, you know, 2.5 ohms in this. So that's not too bad. But then I've got... Two and a half ohms in this one over here. Well, that's not too bad. And this one's got one and a half. That all adds up. You know, that all adds up. All that resistance keeps getting stacked on top of each other. And you have to think of it a lot like your uh, your boundary wire system. You know, we made a video showing that where if you have a couple spots where your wire is nicked and corrosion is starting to form, and you isolate that that one area and everything's good, but when you add it to the rest of your system where you've got another spot where you've got a nick and some corrosion forming and another spot where there's a nick and some corrosion forming, all of that starts to add up. And then once you get to that certain amount of resistance, that's when you get your flashing blue light. It's the same thing with this system here from the transformer all the way through to the main board and the mower. Any little bit of resistance you have in these individual components, it all adds up. It's all spots where the the flow of the current through the wires is going to get bottlenecked. Just, just think of it as being in traffic. You know, that current wants to come through there full force as fast as it can. And now it's stuck sitting in traffic. Then all of a sudden it gets out of the traffic. It's good to go until it hits a red light again. You know, that's, that's the easiest way to picture this to kind of make it make sense for people that don't understand how this, this works and how these these different spots of resistance and multiple components can add up to be one big issue. Okay, let's do a quick review here. You believe that this charging current supervisor is causing an issue with your mower. What's the first thing you're going to do? You're going to put the mower back in the charging station. You're going to open up the keypad and you're going to go into the quick info menu. If we're working with a 450, which in this case we are, you want to check right here and here. You want to combine these two numbers and make sure it is at least 80% of the 7,000 milliamps that are supposed to be coming into the mower. So 80% would be 5,600. 5,600 milliamps is what you want your total to be when you add these two numbers up. In this case here, we have well over 5,600. So we know that everything from the outlet where we plug our transformer in all the way through the charging station, into the mower, all the way to the main board, everything is good. At this point, if you're a consumer, it's time to call a dealer because you're probably going to need your main board replaced. If you're a dealer, well, now you know, hey, I'm probably going to have to replace the main board. All right, you plug your 450 into the charging station, go into the quick info menu, and this is what you see. 
Obviously, this is not getting enough power coming into the mower to the main board. You can see that we got 2,061 milliamps and 2,069 milliamps. That's going to add up to less than that 5,600, which is the 80% of the 7,000 milliamps that you need to make your mower work properly. So now you know that, okay, I've got to check everything from the main board going forward. What's the next step? Here's what I suggest. You start by checking your charging plates in the nose of the mower, as I mentioned. Check the resistance on them. Check for any corrosion. You check the charging contact strips on the charging station. Really easy to pull that top of the charging station off. Check for continuity, like I was explaining there earlier. You know, make sure that where those wires connect the the uh, charging strips, both the ones in the mower and the one in the charging station, there's not corrosion built up under that. I suggest you start with those two things first because those are the two main components that are out in the elements all the time. These two components are the easiest ones to separate from the mower or from the charging station to test. They're both short wire assemblies and real easy to get to. I do suggest if you find any kind of an issue with the charging plates on the mower and you go to replace that, that harness assembly, split the mower open and replace the harness inside of the mower as well. Just easier to get it all done at one time. They've changed that harness. It's a better type of wire they're using now. So if you had issues with that, with that charging plate assembly, there's the possibility it was starting to take a toll on those wires in that harness inside the mower. So just rather be safe than sorry, change out that harness as well. See, when you have the top off the charging station, you have the plug right here, you have the other end where the contacts are at, makes it real simple to check the resistance in this harness on the charging station. While you have this cover off, Visually inspect the charging station board. See if there's anything really noticeable there. You know, are there are a bunch of ants and slugs crawling all over it. Uh, you know, has moisture gotten in there? Do you see spots of corrosion here and there? If the charging station circuit board passes a visual examination, then unplug this big plug down here at the bottom of the charging station board. Unplug your low voltage cable from your transformer. Bring the end of your low voltage cable you just unplugged from the transformer around to the front of your charging station. And right here where you have this plug that you unplugged from the circuit board in your charging station, you can test for resistance all the way from the end of your low voltage cable to the end of this plug. Because the low voltage cable plugs into the back of the charging station. That charging station has a harness and this is the other end of that harness. So you're testing that entire works right there be from the end where the transformer plugs in all the way to your circuit board. If you don't have high resistance in your positive or negative wires there, then you know that your low voltage cable is good. You know that your charging station harness is good. If you do see a bit of resistance there in either the positive or the negative side when you're checking that entire loop, then you can unplug the low voltage cable from the charging station. Test it individually. Test from the back of your charging station to that plug in the front that goes in the circuit board. See which component has the resistance buildup. Maybe it's both of them. It's hard to say until you actually test it. Now, I will warn you, if you go to try to test the male end of your low voltage cable, you are going to need some smaller probes to stick in there or some kind of adapter to stick in there because the probes from almost every multimeter out there just do not fit in these holes. So make sure you have something on hand so you're getting in there and getting good contact with the connectors inside this plug when you test for your resistance. Okay, so after you test the resistance and all those wires and you put everything back together, you put your mower back in the charging station, your 450X is in there, you open it up, you get back into the quick info menu and you see, uh-oh, I'm still only getting a combined about 4,100 here uh, milliamps. So there's something else. Well, now you know that you're down to your transformer and you're down to your charging station circuit board, which you could only visually inspect. Uh, as far as those two components, 90% of the time, if there's an issue with the transformer, you're going to see a voltage drop. So if you check the voltage at the plug for the low voltage cable on your transformer and it's putting out the 28 volts, plug your low voltage cable into it, then um, Go back to your charging station board, 
where you have that plug at the bottom, unplug that plug at the bottom and test the power coming there through your charging station and everything. Make sure you still got the 28 volts there. All right, so now you're at the point where you've gone through, you've checked all of your wiring harnesses, you've replaced anything that was questionable, and now you've checked the voltage coming out of your transformer at the end of the cable on the transformer, then you plugged in your low voltage cable, you checked the voltage coming all the way through to the charging station board, and you didn't really have a drop there, everything was good. So you've ruled out all that stuff, it's got to be the charging station board, it could be the only thing left causing you to not have that 80% of the charging current you need to have, right? Come on, don't fall asleep on me now. This is where I was testing you. That is not completely correct. Because if you look at this right here, obviously we're working with a 450. Because we got battery one, battery two. We got a charge current coming into both the batteries. We have 18.4 volts coming in to both batteries. So we, we have good voltage coming in. But we have 2,061 milliamps coming into one battery, 2,069 milliamps coming into the other. We can go up to 7,000 on here. We need a minimum of 5,600. That's our 80% of 7,000. We're below that. How can we be below that if we went through and we checked and we made sure that our wires are good and we made sure our transformer is putting out the right voltage and it, it's got to be the charging station board. That's the only thing left, right? No. This is the wrong transformer. If you add up those two totals, you're going to come out to around 4,100 and some change milliamps. Remember, way back when I showed you the different transformers and I said, this transformer works for this model and this model. It puts out this many milliamps or amps as it right on there. If you go look at the transformer that is used with the charging station that this 450 is plugged into, you will find that it says that it is rated for 4,200 milliamps, 4.2 amps. This is the wrong transformer. You might have been using it for years with your 450, and it worked. It just charged a little bit slower. It took a little bit more time. But now you're not going to be able to use that because the mower needs to see that 80% of the 7,000 milliamps that it is expecting to have there in its charging system. because that 4.2 amp or 4,200 milliamp transformer cannot meet that required 5,600 milliamps, which is the 80% of the 7,000 milliamps. The mower is not going to allow this system to work. It's going to come into the charging station. It's going to sit there for 30 seconds. It's going to back out and it's going to wander around. And it's going to do that the eight times like you saw earlier in the video because you don't have the proper amount of current there. So once you verify that you have the proper transformer for the mower you are using, if you still have that low current, then yes, the charging station board is probably going to be your culprit. You know your transformer is putting out the proper voltage. You know you have the right transformer. You know all your wiring is good now because you replaced anything that was questionable as far as the amount of resistance in the wires. That leaves the charging station board as really the only thing you can't test on a bench and say yes it's good or nope it's bad that's one where you have to pretty much swap it out to make sure that that is the issue and when you have all these other things working properly and you're down to just that hey the odds are pretty good that's gonna be your problem so hopefully now you guys have a better understanding of what this error is or why you might be getting these errors I repeated several things in there over and over again because I wanted to make sure that you were getting what I was saying I, I wanted to make sure that you realize this isn't as daunting as it might seem to find the problem. You know, if you start with that quick info menu to see what your battery has going on, what's coming in there to the main board, and you can say, okay, I've got enough current coming in here to my main board. Now it's time to call the dealer, let them take care of this. Or you can say, I don't have enough current coming in here. I got this because now I know what to do. I need to just start going through here and looking for high amounts of resistance and weed them out. That's something you can handle at home. If you know how to use a multimeter and you know how to test for resistance, you're good to go. You don't have to get anybody involved. You don't have to worry about not having a dealer near you. You don't have to worry about calling a dealer out. You can take care of this. If you need a little bit of extra help, you know where to get it. www.roboticmowerservices.com. That's where you can get your parts. And if you have some questions or you need some more information, you can go right on our website there while you're shopping for your parts and you can hit the uh, contact us 
button there or more information. I mean, there's plenty of ways on that website to reach out to us, to send us an email. Emails are the best way to contact us when you have something you need technical support with. So hopefully, as I said, this makes this a little bit easier, a little bit clearer to understand. And now you guys are going to realize why your mower is just sitting there next to the charging station some morning when you get up. Um, if you have any questions whatsoever, again, like I said, you can shoot us an email, roboticmowerservices at gmail.com. You can reach us through our website, www.roboticmowerservices.com. You can feel free to leave comments, questions on this video. We always appreciate when you do. So that's going to do it for this video here. Be sure to subscribe to this channel. And thank you for watching.